I'm a teacher. That's what I am. I saw the advertisement on the Royal Society of Chemistry website and thought that this was something that I'd really like to do now I'm retired and keep my mind occupied and perhaps contributes something to the, uh, to the exercise. It's, it's quite a responsibility. Uh, you, you've dealt with students in, in 30s and 40s, maybe 50s in Nigeria, but to reach hundreds of thousands, millions, is, is a responsibility. So we've got to get this thing right. I think science has, is, 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 is difficult because some, some of the scientific concepts are counterintuitive. They, they, they're not just common sense. So a lot of misconceptions built up, build, build up when you are trying to learn science. So I think one of the things that I, I, I found very important is to try to overcome those misconceptions. And I think possibly one of the reasons why those misconceptions arise is that the science that is taught is not always taught in context, in, in a real, global, useful context. So I think my, my motto for science teaching is to set the science in a, a real, everyday, um, global context and to try to address the, the, the misconceptions that have been perpetuated possibly through science teachers as much as, uh, as, the, as the media. There are a lot of children in this world of ours who have no access to education and I think if few school enables them to gain some, in, some, some education um, I think we've, we've achieved a, a main objective. Most people in the Western world have got schools and plenty of resources but if this, if this can reach the, the parts that other education can't reach I think we'll have achieved something really great. I think there's a certain amount of scientific understanding that's necessary to, to know how this world of ours works, how it functions, how ecosystems interact with the environment, a little bit about the chemistry of, of climate change and so on, which a lot of people, particularly politicians and, and people who are the leaders of industry, do not understand. And without that understanding they can't, they can't really understand the, the, the solutions that need to be made. So a scientific understanding I think is a, is a human right and it's a human, necess a human need so that um, the industrialists and the politicians can put the right policies in place. Chemistry is the science of matter, and that's we, we have we have taken materials from the from the earth. We've spread them around the planet. We've polluted the planet, and we need desperately to understand what these materials are, how they behave, in order to make sure that we can develop a a way of 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 operating, in a sense, like natural ecosystems. They recycle materials and um, mankind has got to do the same. We can't keep digging things up, using them and throwing them away. And without a chemical understanding, uh, a lot of people will not understand how that can be done or why it should be done. Mm -hmm. Biology is life on this planet and life on this planet uh, it works quite happily without mankind being around but as soon as mankind started to develop their industrial um, methods and so on um, ecosystems began to be threatened and with a knowledge of biology not only can we keep our own health and, and progress going in, a, in an ecologically friendly way but we can also hopefully uh, protect what's left of the world's uh, wonderful ecosystems. 
it's, it's been a very, very worthwhile experience for me. I, I've sort of come to the end of my career and feel I've still got something I can provide and give and so on. And, and it's been really great to have, to have met you all and be able to participate in this, uh, in this enterprise. Entertaining, enterprising, and I, I, I was trying to think of a word that summed up the sort of humanitarianness of it, the, the sort of the, ide the, the, the ideals, the idealistic maybe perhaps, maybe idealistic.